to set it up there. Hey everybody, welcome back to What's for Dinner. I hope you're all doing great today. If you have any questions, make sure you uh, reach out to your medical provider uh, with those questions. And if you need to find somebody who specializes in bioidentical hormone replacement therapy or hormones, you can reach out to worldlinkmedical.com and look up their uh, provider directory there. And if you're looking for somebody who specializes in low insulin ways of eating, low carb, keto, carnivore, you can go to lowcarbusa.org or you can go to smhp.org. All of those sites have provider directories. So you just go in there, enter your local information, and they'll bring up all the providers that are closest to you. Yes. So I um, wanted to kind of go over real quick what we have going on today. Teresa did some leftovers. We kind of have a quick dinner. We've had a lot going on lately, as we've mentioned before. So some of our dinners have been um, kind of quick and short and haven't been super creative, but um, we did a little combination of leftovers plus chuffles tonight. Yeah. So there's some fillets on the plate there left over and some of Teresa's pizza that she makes, the low carb pizza. Um, there's some of the chaffles with uh, Munster cheese. Yep. And I have I've to melt that and then Swiss. Yeah, baby Swiss on mine. So it's two cups of shredded mozzarella, four eggs, and a half a cup of almond flour. And then I have ham out and pepperoni to put on there, onion and tomato. Then you air fried some more wings. Yeah, this is just the leftover wings. Yeah, leftovers just heated them back up. And then you did some bacon. Yep. And there's our waffle maker that Teresa uses to make the chaffles. Yep. And of course, our seasonings. We've got our Redmond's Real Salt and our Jane's Crazy Mixed Up Seasoning. And farm fresh eggs, of course. So super yummy. All right. So that's our low insulin way of eating. And speaking of low insulin, I think we wanted to talk a little bit about that part of our theme. As part yeah, of our theme. First, though, I would like for you to put in the comments. If you've decorated for Christmas and when you usually decorate for Christmas. Oh my. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's been some contention in our household, mostly between <laughs> Teresa and the, and the kids that we started decorating for Christmas a bit too early. So we started, what was it last Friday? So last weekend I decorated the house. You erected the tree today, but now we're this weekend we'll put decorations on it. I used to start Thanksgiving weekend, but the last couple of years I did it November 1st. So, but I was going to be out of town this week, so I did it, and the kids are having a conniption. So, tell me right when on. you usually decorate yeah. if you celebrate Christmas. That'll be interesting to hear all that. So, all right, but moving along to the theme for tonight, it's going to be tips on how to get started on a low insulin way of eating. So, how to get started? So, I would say keep it simple. So, when you're like, our meals have been kind of simple, I'm like, first of all, we're not extravagant foodie people, um, but this is easy. So, Mark was doing something, and he came around 10 till 3 and said, I'm ready to eat whenever you are. It's 3.30 now. So it took me 40 minutes. And the only reason it took me a little bit was because the chicken wings take 30 minutes. So um, you can just throw this together in no time. So while chicken wings were going, I'm cutting up onions and stuff. Also plan ahead. We know, so figure out what you like to plan ahead. We know we like beef. So we just have a freezer full of ground beef and a freezer full, not a freezer full, but we have steaks. You know, we probably, if we had to, could probably eat 10 straight days of steaks. Um, so I am either thawing that out or, um, you know, like just or so we're buying it fresh and yeah, we're bringing it right so on you're the not yeah. like, <clears throat> just so you're not like, what am I having? Yeah. And so keep talking. Okay. Yeah. So tonight isn't a normal night for us. Normally when I, we come home from work or, you know, we're at the end of the day and ready to start dinner, I'm outside grilling because, you know, remember red meat is always our, our main course yes. on our, our dish. So that's why we always have steaks or burgers. The other stuff like chicken and pork and fish and all that stuff, if we eat that, those are sides for yep. us. And uh, so I'm usually outside grilling and then Teresa's is usually in here, you know, air frying, using the chaffle maker, um, you know, whatever. So, and then. Yep. So this is for tomorrow. So when I leave for work, I will just hook this up because Mark is volunteering at church tomorrow, but there's two chuck roasts in there. And I just melted a whole stick of butter and um, I crushed a whole entire like thing. I don't know. They're not clove. The whole thing of, of garlic and then kind of cut slits in the chuck roast and then pasted it with the butter. Yeah. So I'll just start that tomorrow and Mark can eat it before he leaves for church and I can eat it when I get home. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So super easy. So you don't have to think too far ahead. But just one or two steps ahead is is uh, what you need to do, and have things on hand like deli meat. People will say, "Oh, you shouldn't eat deli meat." Well, guess what? We're eating deli meat. Deli meat, cheese, hard boiled eggs, avocados, um, bacon in a in a ziploc like that stuff will save your life when you are getting really hungry or um, jonesing for food or on the run. And we're going to talk about that in a minute too. Which part? 
the jonesing for food oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. when you're hungry. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, if you're eating this way, you shouldn't have to snack a lot. If you're hungry in between meals, you didn't eat enough. Hmm. So for your meals, you should not be counting calories. You should just be conscious of how many carbohydrates you eat. So again, and with fat, fat is the lever for fullness or satiety. So if you're eating enough, you really won't be too terribly hungry in between to snack. But if you do need to snack, have some, some stuff readily available, cheese, pickles, you know, something like that. I forgot and, what I was going to say. Oh, well, you were going to, I think it segues naturally into meat though. And we were talking, we're going to talk about that next. So you can, cause you can eat as much as that as you want. You can eat as much meat as you want. Um, and then people always, so someone just, there's always the talk about fruit and it's natural sugars. So if oh, you're yeah. a diabetic, you cannot have fruit. Okay. If you're a diabetic, you have to think like you're allergic to sugar. sugar. Yeah. Like people with peanut allergies don't walk around going, oh, we should get have peanuts. Like they're allergic. So fruit is a natural sugar, but your body doesn't know the difference if you eat a banana or you go to Cold Stone Creamery. Yeah. The, doesn't the, know the difference. The goal here isn't to eat cleaner, eat organic or eat, you know, natural food. The, the goal here is to reduce the amount of insulin that our pancreas is producing. And the only way you can do that is by not eating sugar and not eating carbohydrates. They're both the same thing. Yeah. And, and I see these dietitians trolling people's page. Like the, the second people act like what we're saying is restrictive, like, you can have fruit. Give me a break. If you're a diabetic, I'm sorry, you cannot. If you're allergic to peanuts, you may not have peanuts. There's just nothing restrict about eating a ancestrally appropriate, species appropriate, ancestral diet right. that we've been that we've been for generations we've right. been eating. Right. So, um, and then the other thing, so fruits. That's fruits. Now, if you're not a diabetic and you can moderate fruits, I have a hard time. Sometimes I have to say to Mark, I get going with berries. And I'll have to say, do not let me buy berries the next time we go to the grocery store. Um, but veggies, if you like veg, by all means have a low carb veg. But what I tell people is you should give up veg for 30 days and then reintroduce them very slowly to one make sure. Time. Yeah. One at a time to make sure veg likes you. If you have psoriasis, eczema, IBS, Crohn's, those are things that I think you probably don't need to be eating fruit, uh, veg. Yeah, for sure. And also, you know, if you if you have problems with gas and bloating and things like that, a lot of times because you know you have to your butt, your stomach, and your probiotics have to ferment vegetables and yes. fruits in order to digest them. You know, when you're eating meats that uses enzymes, and you can change that whole process in your yeah. body. But it's that fermentation process, you know, that causes the bubbles and the gas and the bloating and all that stuff that comes with that. Yep. So. And then there's always the sweet tooth. What do we do when we have a sweet tooth? Well, number one, Rosette's Mix. So rosettesmix.com. Mm -hmm. um, and you can have sweet stuff. Make, just make it with almond flour and, you know, monk fruit she does. Um, the other thing is many times sugar cravings are fat. You, they can be um, taken care of with fat. Yeah. So I've told you guys this before a couple times recently. I used to dip pork rinds in sour cream because sour cream is pure fat. Pork rinds is pure fat. You could dip it in salsa, but salsa is not really fat. Pork rinds is fat. And then if you want something hot, I melt or soften cream cheese, pour in tons of Jane's crazy seasoning and garlic powder, stir that together, and then dip my pork rinds in there. Yeah. Every single time I've had to do that, it has done the trick. It will satiate you. You'll lose your, your sugar cravings. Yep. You know? And if not, what I do sometimes is I just say, the Lord is my sustainer. I certainly don't need whatever I think I need right now. Mm -hmm. So, or go take a walk or go play ball with your dog or, you know, all of those kinds of things. But many times it can be um, satiated with fat. And don't ever think, because we know what we're talking about a little <laughs> bit like this and we have some experience with this and maybe you don't, maybe you do. Um, don't ever think that we don't, we aren't susceptible to all these things that are happening to you guys too. So, I mean, we could talk to you about that all day long here about stories and, and whatnot. So oh um, we all fall off the wagon, you know? <sighs> yeah. And, and that kind of um, leads mm -hmm. into the next, the next point. Yeah. You know, one time I worked with a trainer and she had me, cheat and eat everything I could eat in a four hour window once a week. I don't think that's advisable. I think that continues the food addiction mm. and then doesn't allow you to get into ketosis and get going again. Because by the time the week comes around, first of all, you're thinking constantly about it. My day was Saturday. So I would hoard things through the week for my Saturday cheat. Okay. That's just not good. No. Um, and then you never are going to get where you want to be because you're going to keep interrupting the ketosis and, um, weight loss cycle. Everyone wants to lose fat, yeah. but there's other things that we're doing. Um, 
The other thing I, I suggest is stopping alcohol for at least 30 days and see how you feel. I think alcohol has been normalized in our society. Absolutely. And it is a poison. Um, we do drink occasionally. If you guys saw when Doug and Pam were here, we had wine laying out when we did what's for dinner. But every night, it's not good for you. So. And so uh, when we had the wine with uh, Doug and Pam when they were here, those are the founders of uh, Low Carb USA were yeah. visiting with us. They had low carb dry farm right. wines with them because they have that at their, their conferences and they brought those back from on the way back from a conference. Yeah. And so we drink that and it's low carb, but we don't make, um, we have, there's no mistake. We understand fully yeah. that while we have alcohol on board, our body is not going to be able to tap into our fat stores to use that as fuel. Your body, um, your body recognizes alcohol as poison. Yes. So your body prioritizes metabolizing the alcohol and getting out of your system before it taps into your, your carbohydrates yeah. or your fats or your protein or anything else. So yeah. it sabotages your weight loss. And just because it's low carb doesn't mean anything. It's just the alcohol part by itself. Right. Is enough. And that gets us into other things that we have to talk about another time. But a lot of women drink alcohol because they're not sleeping. They need progesterone and they need estrogen. But you yeah. don't know that because doctors tell you this or that. So um, anyway, and, that, and the other, oh, go ahead. No, and that normalization of coming home and having a glass or two of wine and whatnot, you know, it's fine if that's what you want to do, if that's your jam. But I just understand, don't don't fool yourself into thinking that you're going to right. be in ketosis or you're going to lose weight when you're drinking a couple of glasses of wine every night or even yeah. one. Yeah. It's, it's not going to happen. And the other thing is throw the scale out. Do not weigh mm -hmm. yourself. Do not obsessively weigh yourself. The scale is the last thing to move. You are repairing damage in your pancreas and your liver and your all your visceral fat around your organs. That doesn't show up on the scale. Yeah. Hopefully, you're going to start working out. That's going to make the scale go up because now you're going to be building muscle while you're losing fat. So do not – the scale is a liar. It is. That's why we do the body composition analysis because what would happen is Teresa would put some females on her hormone regimen yeah. and change their ways of eating. They'd start putting on muscle and losing fat but muscle weighs more than fat. So they were putting on weight and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm going on hormones and I'm putting on weight. Right. So we're like, okay, let's do the body composition analysis when we put somebody on hormones. Yes. And you see that when they start, they've got this much fat and they've got this much muscle. And then three months later, you do it again and they've got this much fat and this much muscle. And you tell them it's not important that you're losing weight. It's right. important that you're losing fat. So it's where is the weight coming from? Yep. And then lastly, you got to get quality sleep. Mm, um, just the foundation yeah. right there. Which alcohol will interfere with. Alcohol yes. will put you to sleep quicker. And that's why women do it to sleep. But it, it, it doesn't give you restful sleep. It initiates hot flashes and night sweats. And then typically you interrupt and wake up in the middle of the night. Yep. And when we're talking about good restful sleep, folks, seven to eight hours. I know you guys probably are freaking out right now when we're telling you that. Seven to eight hours. Oh my gosh, I'm lucky you get five or four. So the, the bottom line is, is that if you're not getting at least seven hours of sleep, it doesn't matter how you eat. Right. It doesn't matter how much you work out. It doesn't no. matter how many vitamins you're taking and how much organic fruit no. and vegetables you're eating and all that. You're, you're, the damage that's being caused by that lack yes. of sleep is going to well overweigh um, any, anything that you do during the that's day. True. So, it, And there are seasons. There are seasons, you know, but overall, we need to prioritize sleep. We don't in, this, in, this, uh, in our society. Yeah. We equate busyness with importance instead of rest. We think rest is lazy or rest is weak. Rest is, that's self-care. Yeah. And I'm just, sorry, I'm just reading a question that oh, popped up yeah. here, which is from Donata. Um, so I'm not losing um, weight. And since I had my accident, my main exercise is walking. Mm -hmm. And I can't read the whole thing because I can't mess with the phone while yeah. we're uh, videoing here. So if there's more that we're missing. But I do just want to say one thing to the point of, of exercise and walking. Walking is not exercising. I'm sorry, Donata. As much as um, I love to walk too, it's that is activity. Yeah. Uh, exercising is is um, things like sprints, um, high intensity training. Things like sprints, uh, resistance training. You've got to go to the gym. Uh, the older we get, it's even more important to maintain or put on a lean muscle mass. And um, as, as as good as walking is for getting sunshine and fresh air, and you know calming your mind and, you know, breathing and you are burning some calories, it's not considered exercise. So I exercise down in our, um, in our John Deere room because the weights, I'm girl and the weights are fine for me, but I can only do upper body right now because my back and hip is so painful. So you could do bands, um, or you could just do lower body, um, you know, just something, something to get it, lose uh, or to uh, get your muscle mass going. Yeah, absolutely. The point is though, is you have to do exercises that you reach total muscle failure. So yeah. think sprinting, 
uh, if you're running a really fast, hard sprint on, on grass or whatever, and you just can't go anymore, like your legs, your arms, every part of your body is exhausted. That's resistance training, getting on a, a rowing machine and going as hard as you can for 20 seconds on that rower uh, until you just can't go anymore. That's resistance training or going to the gym and doing a bicep curl until you reach muscle failure and it has to reach muscle failure. That's the signal that your brain receives, that your body is not, um, is not sufficient the way it is now, that it has to grow back bigger and stronger. Um, that's what you need to actually put on the muscle. Donata's story and her accident is nothing short of a miracle that she's alive. Mm. Um, so I would think maybe we could do upper body and maybe we could do bands with, gotcha. with her. Okay. So, um, Sorry, if you Donata, guys, I, didn't know, I didn't know the background on that. So If you guys go back on videos on our page for Facebook, that is, go back to January 2020 and you will see me in the garage doing the smart training workout. And then two or three days later, there's snow in the background here. Then we went to Florida, there was no snow. And I have video of Mark and a couple machines doing the same thing at the gym. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. Okay, what else? That's I think all I got. It's just, it's hard. Yeah. It's hard, holidays are coming. Um, there's gonna be food everywhere you look soon. Everywhere you look. Yeah. And it's hard. So just be careful. Yep. But, but give yourself grace. At some point, we've got to say like, no, I have to do this. Yeah, for sure. So, All right, guys, if you um, haven't already done so, please like or subscribe uh, to our YouTube and Facebook pages. And um, as always, any kind of comments or little hearts or stars yes. you can throw our ways and things like that will help us with our algorithms and whatnot and uh, putting up any more followers. Yeah. And um, we won't see you tomorrow night. Yeah. Tomorrow night we'll be we'll be tied up doing some things for church. Yep. So speaking of church, hope to see you all there tonight. Yay! And as always, we love you guys and God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.